Okay, I think we're recording. We're recording. The first thing is that we need to do, what I normally do is I flick to there, roll all the treble off and turn the volume up full and then because for all intents and purposes although this song is reduced uh, in semitones I'm still th thinking of it as actually playing in the key of D so I'm going to choose the D string the fourth one two one two three four the fourth string as the first string to actually tune I hope you can hear me on the guitar but um, on the tuner that D note is actually showing as a C because it's been reduced from that D there down to a C so that's kind of the root string so it's best to get this one stabilised first in long years of experience that's what I've found and then what I'll tend to do is go for the next lowest one which is actually uh, showing on the tuner as a G so we've got a, a D string that's showing as a C and a A string that's showing as a G now I'm going to leave the 6th string because I've detuned that further what I'm going to do now is do all back right to the first top string which would normally show as an E but it's showing as a D because it's tuned down by two semitones or a full tone so we've got a D note there on the E string we've got an A note there on the what would be the normally the B string so we've got D, A, then we've already dealt, no sorry we've not dealt with this one yet, this is the, what would normally be the G string is showing as an F. So I've got an D, an A, an F, then to the original C on the fourth string that we dealt with first, then the G, and you can see this is slightly moving because of all this changing around. So then finally we get to the bottom. Which if it was regular tuning, drop tuned, it would be a D, but we're dropping it further down to a C. So, to recap then, first string, that's tuned to a D note. Second string is tuned to an A. Third is tuned to an F. Fourth is tuned to a C. Fifth to a G. And the bottom to a C. So now you can play a D major chord using all six strings. It's quite a lively guitar sound, I'm just going to tune, uh, tone it down a little bit. So we've got, when we finger the D chord, that's an E note now, then a C, then a G, then a C, then a G, and a C, so it's mostly C's and G's, apart from that E note there, which is the major third, above a C. So it all ends up being a kind of a ringy kind of a big sound. Okay, 
you see me. So we've got it in tune. That's tuning. Now it's all based around that chord, which is open in D major. But I'm choosing to play it as a fifth dyad. I was playing the fifth string, then the fourth string and the third string and also I can add that in so yeah so if you bend that in just squeeze it down a little bit keep that finger there rigid because then that allows you to slide this shape around and all the time Got that ominous bottom string uh, ring, and I'll refer to it as a D. It's not really the D in real terms, as we de we've detuned it, but it's playing the role of what an open D string would, would play if we were in standard tuning. And that's the first nice thing about this is that I'm following a pentatonic scale line. D, F, G, A, C, and back to a D. Now I'm going to tune this briefly back to where it should be, and that I'll just play a pentatonic D scale, pentatonic minor, D, F, G, A, C. Play it in dyads, in other words, a root on the fifth string there, if you can see, then a perfect fifth above that root, which is the G note, and then an octave C there, C, G, C. Okay, so this is how I'm starting it off, this song. On one guitar, I'm actually removing that and just playing this as a sliding octave. So there's only two strings, the fifth and the third, sliding from the third fret, if you can see where the root is there, Slide up from the third fret to the fifth fret, and then letting it slide off. So I get three, four, three, four, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. Okay, so that's just a sliding octave from C's to D's. And I'm kind of stroking along the line, not down here, where it sounds really bright and brittle. It kind of warms up as we get to around about that. So to get the sound, that's where you've really got to play it, there. Okay, so I'm going to just play that through on a loop on the drums. And it's a bit tricky because I've got the key turning around. Two, three, four. Bit of a vibrato thing. For the slide. Sorry, I've done that wrong. Scrap that because I forgot to take that back down to an E. A, a, a C, sorry. I'll do that again. Two, two, three.
Okay, so that little bit at the end is just a pentatonic scale, open string, then to the D sharp, so that's C, D sharp, then third finger to the fifth fret, and then hit and slide, so you get. Then that's the third fret of the fifth. You see that? Now you can see that. Okay. Bit difficult to get this in the right position. And then we brought on the end. Now, technically speaking, what I do is I play down, up, down, up, down, up. extra bit of fluency and because the strings are slacked off it's easy to get that control on the vibrato we don't go overboard like but it's just and it's not this business it's just pulling very slightly on the string and relaxing it back I'm using my thumb at the back there to stabilise that. Now I'm not letting the guitar wobble about all over the place like this. I'm securing it with my arm so that I can keep the vibrato under control. Okay, so that's part one of all this equation. We get one, two. One more time. One, two, three, four. that little dyad slide and that brings the whole thing part one to an end slightly altering this sometimes it might be a bit confusing because it tends to be how I feel at the time that I play it but I think it's best if you keep it fir open first finger third finger slide third finger and then first finger again so you only need to worry about two fingers occasionally then I've been playing it little finger which you can do as well, which is, you know, when we get when we get more into it, it has advantages to play it with the little finger rather than the third finger. And just so you can see what the actual scale line is, it's easier just to choose two fingers. That's why I use a little finger there because it places it in position. That's one and three. This is one and four. 
playing the same thing. Practice that. So you're back there for that. And I'm trying to get it all, all the strings to bring through this block of wood to make it resonate. Working it kind of muscular but under control. One more time just for good luck. start of the riff cycle but at the start it drops at the end so the actual riff emits that at the start and just starts so it's a D5 dyad first bit of the last part on, <laughs> the last bit of the first part on. And then. And then. Because we've now got a, a drop tuned relative sixth string, we can play fifth dyads on the sixth, fifth, and fourth string by placing that as a partial bar, a bit like a, using a slide. If it were a slide. semitone you see that root of perfect fifth and an octave of the next key and again and you get that familiar kind of blues using first finger slide hit slide hit hit slide it you've got to keep the pressure on all three strings hit
So that's playing rhythmically all the time. I'll play that against. And that's important to keep the rhythm. Hopefully you can hear that round again. Okay, so that is basically the main first riff. It's and then I played it wrong partially on purpose and partially not on purpose at one point there just to show you how easy or how difficult it can be to not forget to go to that there's a tendency to want to do that because you're in this position but it's not, it's going to drop right to there and I'm dip, dipping the shoulder to get So when I wrote it, I didn't really know where to go at that point. So I decided, instead of playing it from there, I'd try it from there. So it sort of dropped a tone in key. So it's in kind of B flat now, complicated by the tuning differential and it's showing A sharp on my tune and A sharp. So anyway, it's the same thing, instead of sliding from 5th to 7th fret, we're sliding from 3rd to 5th uh, fret, the same shape, dyed shape. exercise so you can pick chromatically that position out and any position but So it's like the same movement all dropped down by a tone from the original riff. 
apart from that doesn't come into the second part and then I'm moving up from there up another three frets and sliding up two Hit, slide, hit. Hit, slide, hit. Hit, slide, hit. That's important. Then you've got to repeat it round. So you've got to get from there, right back down to there. That slide is a bit of a jump. That's it would normally be an F5 position to an A sharp and back to a C. behind the scenes here trying to get the uh, mix bus to cooperate so I think this this should work I'm gonna let it run through four times and you can hear just the drums and the bass when it gets to the end of the load pod you know. I'm starting from that position a oh, one two three four going to happen now is we're going to play exactly the same part but move it back up to where we originally were. set up a loop on this because the keys changed on it now. There you go, mix plus might not incorporate here so I'll just try. Okay, supposed to loop around that. Um, let me try one more time. This is the problem that I've got, I'm afraid, with computers not wanting to cooperate with me while I'm doing this. I need another six hours really. For some reason, this is mixed bus <laughs> at its very worst when you need it not to be. So 
so that. That loop from the selection. This is the uh, the final piece of the jigsaw, really. It's the chorus part. Uh, normally, uh, Jimi Hendrix uh, E7 sharp nine per plays chord. Now uh, this is more of a bluesy type thing. So I'll slide the second finger at right up to position there on fret 7 of 5 first finger is on fret 6 of 4 and third finger is on fret 7 of 3 so you get that kind of a shape there not using the bottom string just those three and then a the little finger on eight of two. And a multiple vibrato. That rather kind of disorientating effect. Now, what I'm going to do is show an exercise, move it all the way down to the lowest position you can still finger that. Found there. Let's just tie Tabor King's X. Sliding the shape around, which is not easy. To maintain its positions. But in the song, I'm choosing to play it with the root there on string 5 because then I can use the bottom string down up down up down up down up bang down up down up chord down up down up chord just down up down up on the bottom string and then follow through with the right but don't play Top string, and she'll end up with this, which is a little bit too far, away, far away from where we want to be. Quite a nice sound, jazzy kind of sound, but we don't want it in this. It's just and then slide the whole chord. That's the tricky one to get. All those four notes still to be ringing when you've slid down rather than up. Which is why it's a good idea to practice this exercise. to drop the lowest position there that is going to drop off the end song I'm actually playing two guitar parts so this riff I'm playing like that on one side and I'm playing that on the other 
other side. So I'm only showing that first what I've showed is all just one side, one the, the left I think the left hand side of the stereo. That can make the same sound there but in a different position. is a bit more tricky. Where are we going to get this? Sliding. Business happening. Here's the second part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play all the way through uh, with what I've, the parts that I've showed you there. I'm going to play that with that little finger.
sorry, I thought I'd tune back up again then. I'll do that again.
Ja, 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 Okay, I hope it's been a help, help for you anyway, but you know, it's a little, bit of a long winded uh, situation, a bit difficult to do when I've only got <laughs> two arms and a, a massive amount of <laughs> technical equipment to uh, be uh, watching over at the same time, including Mixbus, which has not um, been functioning as I wanted it to, which is about part of the course. You can see over my uh, uh, right shoulder. That superior drummer, which has been banging away live as I've been playing, because the the drums have been playing live on a, a, the pre-written MIDI file, and the rest of it is is the, basically the same uh, mix, but with just things dropped out, you know, for the purposes of doing this. Really, I hope you can understand my limey accent, my limey accent. Oh, you mad, you mad. See you later, Jim.